Hi, I'm Mark Joseph, and I'm here today with Robert Black, who is a premier collector of the clothing design of William Trevia. He's also written a book, or co-authored a book about Trevia, and is starting a foundation uh, with the clothing design of William Trevia. And thank you for having me here, Mark. It's um, really exciting for me because I've got a passion for fashion that so many of us do. And through um, a very dear friend of mine, Kimberly Ashley, who was writing a, bio a biography on uh, Trevia, I got involved, as we call on the Trevia bandwagon, and started to learn more about him. And have since then collected you know, quite a few pieces, and I'm fascinated by his work. So it's going to be really fun to show you some of that today. That's fantastic. So tell me, what is it about uh, Trevia that stands out for you uh, beyond many other clothing designers? Well, he had um, about 60 years in the industry, so he clothed and, and designed for just a myriad of people. But his main emphasis was um, to make women beautiful, um, sexy, and glamorous. So you put that combination together and it's just really dynamic. Um, also, something that can't be forgotten by any means and isn't is he really truly designed probably the most famous dress in the world, and that is the white dress that Marilyn Monroe wears in the seven year age. Um, the which true is the iconic design. design. It is iconic. Now, design. everybody, his beginnings, the, his beginnings in design, wasn't he working in a uh, movie costume department? He was, and he actually was born in California, in Catalina Island and um, was always an artistic kid, and uh, started when he was between 14 and 16 um, designing for burlesque. And um, down on Sunset, uh, oh gosh, I'm gonna forget the name of it, um, Earl Carroll Review, he was a burlesque house, and he started doing costumes for burlesque and was fascinated by it, and that got him into the movie side of it. So he worked for three different studios during his career, and then in the 50s started his own, his own design line. Great. So tell me about uh, the book that you have co-authored. The book is really fun. I love it. Um, and it was really a spin-off of the biography that my friend Kimberly Ashley is um, just now completing. I started looking at the material that she had collected for um, the book and discovered that she had over 3,000 images from uh, Bill Trevia's estate that documented his work in photography. And again, I'm just a big photography nut, so I was looking at these things and went, this I would love to have a book out of this collection. These pictures are amazing. So what we had discovered were the, um, the photographs of his collections in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, um, and 80s, actually. And then um, we discovered all the headshots that the celebrities had autographed to him over the years, going back to the 40s. Um, and the notes that they had written, which some are very funny, some are very intimate, um, some are very scandalous, so you'll get to see all of it. Um, and he also had the um, wardrobe tests of the films he worked on. So there were people from Judy Garland to Sharon Tate, um, Debbie Reynolds, I mean, you named it, any film that he had worked on, there were the wardrobe tests. And those are fascinating to me, to see the people in that genre, and, and literally uh, almost every star you can imagine. And then we came across all of his original um, artist sketches, the croquis. And from his ready-to-wear lines to the celebrity designs in the movie. Are you in contact with members of his family and, and uh, working with them to create both the foundation and to, uh, to research for the book? Absolutely. Um, Bill Saris, who was his business partner the entire career, um, is still alive and he was instrumental in working with Kimberly on the research and uh, allowing the materials to be used. So he's worked very, very closely. And then Kimberly just last week found uh, Bill Trevia's sister, and she's living in California, and she did an interview with her for the biography, and a lot of fascinating information came out of that as well. Oh, so it's fantastic. been very nice, but you know, the interesting part um, on the biography side, when Kimberly was reaching out to people like Debbie Reynolds, who were uh, favorites of Bill Trevia for design, every single person stepped up to the plate immediately because of their intense love for this man and the way that he had treated them and the way that he designed for them. And we have not run across one person that didn't just adore him. I um, took on the task of acquisitions director, and I'm telling you it's been a blast because I have scoured the world literally to try to find iconic pieces of his, um, interesting pieces, simple pieces, but everything I, I certainly can. And, and again, how I met you, um, 
by your absolutely beautiful trivia that we'll see later um, that you have in your collection. Have you uh, run into other collectors of trivia who are... No, I found a lot of admirers, but no one that truly collects. That's fantastic. I know. So, and it's up to you. It's so up to I, you to, 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 to show the work of William Tariq. This is um, one of the pieces that I just absolutely love. And it was done um, for a catalog company and actually a retail store in England called Littlewoods in the 80s. And it was based on the Dynasty collection, the Littlewoods catalog was. And the Dynasty actors, uh, a lot of the actresses actually went over and shot it. But as you can look at this dress, you'll see that this is actually the seven-year itch design of the famous white dress. The difference is, for the 80s, he did this um, handkerchief bottom, but the pleating is the same, and the halter top um, is the same of it. So it was a very sexy dance dress for that period of time. He loved satin. This was done in satin. It was done in a variety of colors. Um, but it, again, follows beautifully the lines of the original dress. And the only difference of the original dress is the bottom was a, circle, you know, a circular cut rather than the handkerchief. We have another great design here um, from the films as well, and this was another Maryland dress. Uh, we've got the accordion pleats on it, um, but this was actually done after the gold lame dress that you see very, very briefly in, I think it's How to Marry a Millionaire, um, but a very famous photograph dress of Marilyn in it. You don't see it long in the movie, but you've seen her in that gold lame dress. And this is the same cut. Um, the only difference that he did for this dress in the 70s is he did the embellishment of the rhinestones that goes down the halter and then creates that diamond pattern. Now this is one of my personal favorites. It's um, a palazzo jumpsuit, and those pants are about four feet wide on the bottom. But the interesting part about this is um, this design was also designed for Diane Carroll for, I believe, the Diane Carroll special that she used to do on TV when she would do her concerts. And the one that he did for her has the same cut, just a different application on the rhinestones. Um, but I think just absolutely beautiful. This is definitely the 70s. And I think it's also very definitely contemporary. Now this, of course, is um, one that you recognize, um, that you had in your collection, that has now ended up in our collection for the foundation. Um, again, the use of chiffon, he did a lot of work in chiffon. And generally, what you will see are the accordion pleats in it. And again, very feminine, very ladylike. I love the T-length on this. And then the beadwork on this is incredibly intricate. And if you were to look at it up close, you would see that this is literally hand done and piece by piece. Um, but again, just a beautiful, beautiful, glamorous dress. And his entire um, philosophy was to make women beautiful and to make them glamorous. And I think we certainly see that in this piece. This dress actually gives us two elements that Trevia was known for. One is the lace. And as you can see, this again is very Marilyn Monroe-esque with the nude um, color to it and the lace over it. And then on the bottom, you see these little kick pleats that are called godets. And he did that so that as a woman walks, the movement and the flow of it is just very feminine and very sexy. So this is very much a red carpet gown. This one is uh, circa probably 1980s, I think is when this was actually done. But again, and the godets are chiffon. So a very beautiful piece. Thank you, Robert. I'm so glad that you were able to, uh, to come here today and to show uh, this spectacular work of William Trevia. Oh, absolutely, and I love what you're doing um, featuring designers because um,